Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who wear in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody, and you're very welcome to Mass here at St. Vincent's in Sheffield. And this is the Mass, of course, of the fourth Sunday of Lent and the gospel is about the man born blind who receives his sight at the hands of Jesus. To the ire I would have to say of the leading Pharisees who prefer to remain in the darkness of unbelief. As we prepare for this Lenten Mass then let us look into our hearts for any darkness that may be there and focus our minds on Jesus, who is the light of the world. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebration to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen myself a king among his sons. When Samuel arrives, he caught sight of Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. He then asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had him sent for, a boy of fresh complexion, with fine eyes and pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood with his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord seized on David and stayed with him from that day on. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, 
My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of the light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right living and truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you, having nothing to do with the futile works of darkness, but exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret are things that people are ashamed even to speak of, but anything exposed by the light will be illuminated, and anything illuminated turns into light. This is why it is said, Wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the Word of God. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows you will have the light of life. Glory to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. You, you are the Word, word of God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, for him to have been born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. He was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as the day lasts, I must carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made a paste with the spittle, put this over the eyes of the blind man and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name which means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came back with his sight restored. His neighbours and people who had earlier seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it's the same one. Others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how do your eyes come to be open? The man called Jesus, he answered, made a pace, daubed my eyes with it and said to me, Go and wash at Siloam. So I went, and when I washed, I could see. They asked, Where is he? I don't know, he answered. They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus made the pace and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, he put a paste on my eyes, and I washed, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself, now that he has opened your eyes? He is a prophet replied the man. However, the Jews would not believe that the man had been blind and had gained his sight without first sending for his parents and asking them, Is this man really your son, who you say was born blind? If so, how is it that he is now able to see? His parents answered, We know he is our son and we know that he was born blind, but we don't know how is it now that he can see, or who opened his eyes. He is old enough, let him speak for himself. His parents spoke like this out of fear of the Jews who had already agreed to expel from the synagogue anyone who should acknowledge Jesus as the Christ. This was why the parents said, he is old enough, 
ask him. So the Jews again sent for the man and said to him, Give glory to God, for our part we know that this man is a sinner. The man answered, I don't know if he is a sinner. I only know that I was blind, and now I can see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He replied, I have told you once, and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it all again? Do you want to become his disciples too? At this they hurled abuse at him. You can be his disciples, they said. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man replied, Now, here is an astonishing thing. He's opened my eyes and you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but God does listen to men who are devout and who do his will. Ever since the world began, it is unheard of for anyone to open the eyes of a man who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't do such a thing. Are you trying to teach us, they replied, and you a sinner through and through since you were born? And they drove him away. Jesus heard they had driven him away, and when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, tell me who he is so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He's speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. Jesus said, It is for judgment that I have come into this world, so that those without sight may see, and though with sight, those with sight turn blind. Hearing this, some Pharisees who were present said to him, We are not blind, surely. Jesus replied, Blind? If you were, you would not be guilty. But since you say, We see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was this man who was born blind who had an operation at the age of 50 in which he gained his eyesight and he could see for the first time. In an interview afterwards he said, I can't wait to get up in the morning to see what I can see. It's the most amazing thing in the world. Now, the man in today's gospel must have felt a bit like that But there is a deeper meaning to today's gospel, which involves all of us. Everyone is born in a state of original blindness, better known as original sin. Baptism opens our eyes. The blind man was asked to wash in the pool of Siloam, which is a symbol of the baptismal font. Baptism is a sacrament of enlightenment by by means of which we receive the gift of faith. But we know that this light of faith, if not guarded and nourished, could easily grow dim and even go out altogether. At the baptismal ceremony, parents are asked to help their children walk always as children of the light. Now, if the parents' faith is weak or merely cultural or not connected to life, then it will be like the blind leading the blind. Jesus gives light to the blind whilst at the same time exposing in contrast those blind to the light. The leading Pharisees turned their backs on Jesus, the light of the world. Judas did the same. When he left the upper room, if you remember, at the Last Supper, Scripture tells us night had fallen. In our world there are unbelievers 
who'd rather we hide the light of our Catholic faith and not go public with it. It could be put down to such a simple thing as wearing a cross round our necks while we're working. They don't mind what we believe privately, so long as we keep it to ourselves. The Pharisees asked the blind man, What have you to say about Jesus yourself? The same is asked of us. Can he rely on us to bring light to a darkened world? As his friends, have we ever helped to open someone's eyes to the beautiful things of God? The blind man comes away with two healings. His bodily eyes are opened, but more importantly, he receives spiritual enlightenment when he openly declares his belief in Jesus and worships him as Lord to the ire of the Pharisees who ridicule him with insults. During Lent, we take a look at what might be blinding us to the light. Perhaps we prefer to remain hazy about what we believe because then we feel less obligated to live by it. But Jesus says, the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light. Catholicism is a religion of revealed truth. We are not left floundering around in a twilight world of our own making, wondering what to believe. Jesus doesn't lead us up a blind alleyway to confuse us. Some, however, feel more at home with a God who keeps us in the dark. But God doesn't deal with us in an arbitrary fashion. Jesus said, I have come into the world so that those without sight may see. It's as simple as that. Salvation involves clearly distinguishing truth from falsehood and light from darkness. So then, as the days get longer and we move further into Lent towards the full light of Easter, we ask the Lord to increase our faith and dispel any darkness from our minds and hearts. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us offer our prayers now and petitions to God our Father. We pray for the Church. May its members be always guided by the light of faith and reason, so as to always know and live by the truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for parents bringing up their children in the faith. May they never feel isolated, 
could find solidarity and friendship within the church community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray that as a church community, <clears throat> the protection of life within the womb may be given top priority. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that physicians may come up with a vaccine to counteract the coronavirus. May those infected be given every help to make a full recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Since today is Mothering Sunday, in the Church's eyes that involves more than be bearing children. We pray for all the women of our parish, whether single, married, with children or not. May the sublime vocation of motherhood always be supported and respected. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have fallen <coughs> ill as a result of the COVID-19 virus, especially those with other health conditions. May they make a speedy recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We also pray for those who died recently in the parish and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. May they enter the heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray now to Mary, the mother of our Saviour. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause now and pray for needs of our own. The Vocations Prayer Loving and generous Father, it is you who call us by name and ask us to follow you. In particular, you call some to serve you as ministers in your church. Bless our Diocese of Halm by raising up faith-filled and dedicated priests, deacons and religious. Bless our families and choose from our homes those who are needed for your mission. Blessed John Ann, pray for us. Blessed Robert Ludlam, pray for us. Blessed Nicholas Garlick, pray for us. Blessed William Richardson, pray for us. Mary, Mother of Perpetual Help, pray for us. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spiritual 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth <coughs> sing a new song in adoration and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to the disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess, profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into the world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendour of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you all for coming to Mass today, this the fourth Sunday of Lent. And may God be with you all. <laughs>